the topic of this video is changing order of integration. Suppose we want to evaluate the integral from 0 to square root of pi of the integral from x to square root of pi of cosine of y squared dy dx. Evaluating this integral with respect to y first is difficult because antiderivatives of cosine of y squared cannot be expressed in terms of elementary functions. So what we will do instead is sketch the region of integration and use this to change the order of integration. When we examine the bounds of integration on this double integral, observe that y ranges from x to square root of pi and x ranges from 0 to square root of pi. Therefore, the region of integration r equals the set of all x, y such that 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to square root of pi and x is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to square root of pi. Let's sketch this region of integration. Notice that in the second inequality, the value of y ranges from the line y equal x to the line y equals square root of pi for values of x ranging from 0 to square root of pi. Since the values of y are bounded between the lines y equal x and y equal square root of pi, the region of integration is this shaded region. Now if we want to integrate with respect to x first, we draw a line segment parallel to the x-axis passing from the left side of the region of integration to the right side of the region of integration. Notice that this line segment starts on the y-axis, which is the line x equals 0, and it goes up to the line y equal x, or x equal to y. Therefore, if we set up a double integral where we integrate with respect to x first, we are integrating from x equals 0 to x equal y on the inner integral. Now recall that this line segment represents the base of a vertical cross-section of the solid parallel to the x-axis. And these vertical cross-sections extend all the way from y equals 0 up to y equal square root of pi. Therefore, our outer bounds of integration are from 0 to square root of pi. Now that we have switched the order of integration, we are ready to evaluate the integral. We begin by evaluating the inner integral with respect to x, and since we treat y as a constant, cosine of y squared is treated as a constant. Therefore, when we integrate cosine of y squared with respect to x, we obtain x cosine of y squared. Now, if we replace x with y, we obtain y cosine of y squared, and if we replace x with 0, we have 0. So this simplifies to the integral from 0 to square root of pi of y cosine of y squared. Letting u equal y squared, we have du equal to 2y dy, or 1 half du equaling y dy. Replacing y squared with u, and replacing y dy, with 1 half du and placing the 1 half outside the integral, we obtain 1 half times the integral from 0 to pi of cosine of u. An antiderivative of cosine of u is sine of u, so we have 1 half sine of u, and by replacing u with pi, we have 1 half sine of pi, which is 0, and if we replace u with 0, we have 1 half sine of 0, which equals 0. So this integral equals 0. The final question that you may be wondering about is why does the double integral in this case equal zero? Using a computer algebra system, we plotted the graph of f of xy equal to cosine of y squared over the region r in the xy plane. Let's shade in the volume bounded between r and the surface. And when we do this, notice that part of the shaded volume is above the xy plane and part of the shaded volume is below the xy plane. In this case, over the region R, the volume of the solid above the xy plane and below the surface equals the volume of the solid below the xy plane and above the surface. In other words, the net volume is equal to zero, which is why the double integral equals zero.